to me, there is a double standard there in in the way that they are just forever perceived around here now, at least by the fans and, again, maybe by some members of the organization. We discussed this in the context of Al Horford because there's a double standard there between Ray and Al Horford because Al basically yeah. did the same thing, <laughs> almost, almost identical. Like what Doc did was start something different in a new place. Al did what Ray did. He left to go to the rival, to the enemy that you're competing mm-hmm. with, you know, in a, in a battle right now, you know, within the conference. So I always thought that was, that was sort of interesting. It was a great movie when I was a kid called Night Shift yeah. uh, with, Henry, with Henry Winkler and there was a, there's a line in it in which the uh, Henry Winkler, basically he and his friend, Michael Keaton, they take the business from, uh, from this pimp played by Richard Belzer and this other guy. And eventually they come back to get him late in the movie and they're about to kill him. And they say, it wouldn't be right to let you live after we killed Franklin. He was our friend. And that's all I kept thinking of when Al Hor- like it wouldn't be right to not boo Al after we booed Ray. Cause we loved Ray. How can you not, how can you treat Al any different? But I think it was circumstances and I think fans sort of, and everybody took their cue from Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce. And, you know, when Ray left, you know, Doc was so beloved by those, by the players. And I think that the Ray thing, let's, let's call this what it is. The Ray thing didn't happen that day. It wasn't as if everything was perfect between every one of those guys. And they were this band of brothers. Ever. They were a band of brothers. Yeah. They fought like brothers. You know, there were issues and there were dynamics within the, one day when I'll write my book, I'll tell you about physical fights between two guys on this team, on that championship team, one of which I was physically in the middle of on a bus because you couldn't get out of it. I mean, they used to <laughs> fight all the time, all right? So this happened in this group. But, they, you know, they, there was an overall love and a, a brotherhood. But, you know, there were issues. Listen, you had guys on, out on that team with extremely strong personalities. You know, Rajan Rondo is on this team. Mm-hmm. Ray Allen is on this team. Kevin Garnett is on this team. They had their own, you know, very deep, strong personalities. But I, I think that double standard is – I, that and it's not unusual that happens in a lot of places in life but I think people took their cue from the players and Doc was a made man and Ray you know when he left before it was over you know Doc left as it was over and yeah. you know they, they had come you know it had run its course and I think you know the new big three era which is its own book had the had the two phases and I'll tell you right now Adam, that thing was over the day after game seven in LA in 2010, hmm. it was over. When we get on that plane at LAX, the whole thing was done. I'm telling you it was done. And by the time that plane landed, the blueprint and the momentum was in effect, had started rolling towards what turned out to be the, the next three years of it, you know, with, with, with Doc staying, with Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce staying, with Shaq coming in with the whole, you know, the, the, the next three years of it were in place. I, I always believe that. So you know, things, things change. I think everybody had been sort of looking over the door because as Danny will tell you, if Danny had one, you know, one regret, there's only a regret about the new big three era is that it didn't start soon enough. Mm -hmm. Those guys were all in their thirties. Imagine Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, imagine that group together two years earlier, three years earlier, four years earlier. And when it's always, I felt the false comparison with the original big three era is that if you compare those, that those groups by age, yeah, the other team won three – the 80s team won three championships, but they won those championships and those guys were in their 20s. Mm-hmm. If you look at the age of the big three and those six years and you compare the new big three are properly to 87 to 93 for the original big three, you know, the new big three outperformed them. We're only left to wonder, you know, what if, you know, Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, and Paul Pierce were three of the best players in the NBA in 2004 and 2006 – uh, you know, what if they had been together then? 